<laughs> yeah, what the devil? Oof, oh yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> so what have I got for you today? Well, again, I'm looking for a bargain, looking on the, on the selling sites, and I come across this little beauty. Okay, this is the Minx X301 subwoofer. So it's only a little thing, um, but these are retailing at currently at 399 pounds okay and i got it for 90 quid i don't think they knew what they had <laughs> um yeah so it's a lovely little compact uh subwoofer um i wanted something smaller uh because i haven't got a lot of room uh by my system and my current subwoofer is quite big which made it a little bit cramped um so this is why i wanted to get something smaller seeing it for 90 pound i thought that's a bargain for this uh I'll definitely get it. Now, I just want to compare it and show you the size of it compared to my current subwoofer. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Whoop. Uh, it's a lot bigger and a lot heavier. <laughs> so you can see the difference in the size. This is a 10 inch subwoofer. It's a Wharfdale Diamond SW150. Uh, and that's got a 10 inch uh, woofer on that with a base port and this has got uh, an 8 inch subwoofer but on the bottom it's got an 8 inch passive one there uh, which is supposed to give it a little bit more oomph um, so it, it gives up more base uh, than the size it is so let's get up close to it and have a little look at it so as I said you've got the 8 inch woofer here it's got digital signal processing dsp so it should give you a better range and it won't distort at high volume and that should stop it happening and like i said at the bottom here you've got your passive radiator which gives it a bit more room so two eight inches there okay and if you look at the wolf dales here to show you just take that over there and i'll show you on the bottom of that you've got, just got a, a base port here then on the back then Okay, on the back, uh, you've got this little switch here, which will just come, uh, no standby, it just comes on all the time when you switch it on. But if you want to leave it switched on, it only comes on when, when it detects a signal. So it's an auto detect there. On off switch, power switch. You, go, you can change this between 100, 120 volt, 220, 240. Obviously I've got it on 240 because we're in the UK. Uh, here's your crossover frequency here. I've got it set on 80 hertz at the moment. Um, I did wonder what these little speaker signs were here. I thought, oh, is that, is that, a, is that a, a floor stander and a bookshelf maybe? I don't know. And then when I looked, I looked, uh, I downloaded the um, manual. And what it is, if you, you set it on that, if you have the Minx speakers to go with it. So they are the Minx Min 22 and these are the Min 12s. So if you've got the speakers that go with this surround sound system, that's what you set it on there. So it tells you exactly what it is. I'm going to set it at 80 hertz and let my receiver do the work. You've got your phase here, which goes up to 90 degrees, 180. And I'm going to leave it on naught because I'm putting it right by my system facing, facing at me. I'm not going to put it behind me. If I had it across the other side of the room, possibly uh, facing behind me, I might put it on 180, but it's fine. Uh, on zero there and then the volume then I've got set just under three quarters now what I did find with the with if I get this round here so I've got the crossover frequency set on that one there let's get it up a little bit so you can see it I've got the crossover frequency set on my Wharfdale to 85 but that's the maximum it goes to and the volume is half now I had to turn this up a little bit more, even though this is 300 watt. Now, this was actually felt a little bit more louder than this did. However, when you do turn it up a little bit, it does put out some really decent bass. Um, we'll give it a little bit of a test run later and I'll compare the two of them, just with a bit of bass. I can't put the, the full music on because obviously, copyright. <laughs> Um, yeah, and also you can see with the Wharfdales, they got the speaker level in. So you, if you if you didn't have a subwoofer output on your amp, you could connect the speakers directly to this. This hasn't got it. This is a more modern one. 
so you've just got it in and out shake it all about uh, so the out is for if you wanted to connect another subwoofer from this one to another one but this is from your amp here so i've got a, a sub out on my amp so i just connect it into here using a, a, a splitter anyway one thing i did notice when i got it so is this shiny piano black and it's really nice it actually goes with my wharfdale 230s because it's got piano black on the front but on the top it was quite scratched it looked like they've um uh, had something resting on it why would you do that no okay i'll just move the camera and show you so i had to get the right camera angle so you could see it and turn the light off because once you get at the wrong angle you can't see the scratches but you can see here look and here they've had something on top of it and it's scratched all the the piano sort of gloss on the top of it i mean like i put it by my hi-fi and no one would ever notice but i would know and i can't take it so um <clears throat> there's a little tip i picked up uh again from techmon i'm a bit of a techmon fanboy okay um and he said you use brasso on the on the perspex glass things of, of, of plastic and things like that uh, and it worked for him so i'm gonna try and brasso this now here's the thing i went around about five shops and all the brasso is sold out and i'm blaming techmon for that it's your fault techmon because you recommended it it's called the techmon effect everybody's gone up and buying brasso because i'm pretty sure people don't have brass in their house anymore uh, but it seems like a lot of people are buying brass that do things like this and the word gets about and everybody buys it great for brasso and they put the price up gimps anyway so i'm gonna get the brasso now um, and try and give it a clean and see if it works i could only get the wadding not the actual liquid it was sold out everywhere and uh, so i'll give it a go and uh, i've I, i've actually test patched it on the back as well it's always best to do this to do a little test, pa test patch underneath or at the back or something just to make sure it's not gonna you know destroy it or make make it worse so i've done a test pack test patch and it come up okay it didn't do anything it didn't do any damage so i'm just going to rip a piece off now and then i'm just going to go around and, and I'm gonna go back and forth and round in circles so i'll try rounding this round in circles first and see how we go okay i'm just going to let that dry now a little bit and then give it a polish off and see how far we've got and see if it's got rid of some of the scratches it may have to do a little bit more um but let's just wait and see let's let it dry off now and then i'll just brush it off with a soft cloth okay so it's all dried off now you've got to wait for it to go a little bit powdery okay it takes about 20 minutes or so uh, and let's just see moment of truth now let's see if it's done its job make sure you use a nice soft cloth for this well it's definitely looking a lot better isn't it yeah it's really faded down the scratches there there's still a few little bits left here and there I may give it one more go and just to see if I can get rid of these sort of deep scratches a bit it's a lot better a lot better so it definitely works and that's why everyone's buying it so if you've got anything that's piano black like this anything very similar you know again like i said my 230s have a piano black front if they've got any scratches on them this would work very good that looks a lot better than it was before let me just give it one more go and uh, we'll come back to it when i finished well i think that's pretty good let's just take this off and give it a look you can see look it's a lot better isn't it A lot better than what it was happy with that so as you can see 
it fits in nicely with my system it's got a bit more room for it there you can see I'm a bit uh, you know pushed for space uh, the piano black ties in well my Wharfdale 230s so yeah so as regards to looks it looks nice fits in well but more importantly how does it sound well let's do a bass off with my Wharfdale let's see which one sounds better because I do like the Wharfdale I mean brand new is 150 pound at the moment and it sounds damn good for a 150 pound subwoofer don't forget this is 400 quid new so I would like to compare the both and see which one is better uh, so I'll do a bass off I was going to just use the bass but you're not going to really hear any difference you know so what I thought I'll just use some YouTube music with some bass heavy tracks uh, and see which one sounds better boom let's have a look there you go okay what did I think hmm it was a close to call than I thought it was going to be this little thing can put out quite a bit of bass um, obviously it's the way it's designed and uh, I would say that this was more room filling but sometimes it did lack a little bit of cohesion the bass tended to you know go off a little bit Whereas this had a much tighter, cleaner bass, and that's obviously down to the DSP in it, uh, controlling the bass. But it does put out a very decent amount of bass for the size it is. I was quite surprised, pleasantly surprised actually, because this is what I'm going to have in my system, and I'm probably going to sell this one off. Even though I do really like this uh, subwoofer, I'm going to stick with this one. Um, just simply because it's just too big for, my, for where I've got it and the space I've got. It kind of causes a boomy sort of sound in the room whereas this was more cohesive more tight um, so what I would say what I would say is if you've got a small to medium room this is ideal probably not great in a big room unless you had two of them maybe but if you've got a slightly bigger room sort of medium to large you know in between them two then I would probably go more for the SW150 anyway that's the end of my video Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and all that nonsense. I'll see you in the next video.